Six. The Blue Alliance. Team 11. Out of Flanders, New Jersey, it's Mark. Drivers behind the line. Three, two, one, go. So today is the day of kickoff where we come to CCM to learn the new game from first. Uh, each year it's released on the first Saturday of January and then once it's released we go into a brainstorming session to try to figure out viable strategies and designs to accomplish the task and then afterwards we have some design meetings with the whole team back at the school. And normally at this time I say okay it's a brand new year, it's a fresh start, it's a, all, all those types of things. This year I feel that it's different. Last year we got the ball rolling and to me I'm looking at 2014 as a as that ball is still rolling. It, it's not a fresh start. It's taking what we've been doing, especially over the past couple of years, and really taking that ball and moving it to a higher level. Uh, last year was a really big growth experience for the team. Um, basically, last year was our most successful season on record, um, and a lot of that was trying to emulate the big names of teams. Teams like 254, the Cheesy Poofs out in California, teams like 118, the Robonauts from Texas. Um, and sort of seeing how their design and build processes work and seeing how we can adapt our model to fit theirs. Um, this year is going to be more of an exploration on our own end. Um, because we are a much bigger team than most other teams, a lot of the traditional structures don't work for us. Um, so we have to design our build season around the idea of the fact that we've got 100 odd students coming in every day and they're all going to need something to do and they can all be doing something. Now with two, two teams, roughly about 140 students, and then you throw in 40 to 50 mentors, and then you throw in parents, and it's just, we are huge. When the typical FRC teams around the country are in that 25 to 30 range, and we're 140, I mean, that just puts it into scope, okay? Well, last year, our whole team got restructured, so um, we have a new, completely separate design phase where we have um, a team of students that cat out the entire robot, and then that goes to the mechanical team that actually manufactures everything. So we should have a much smoother design process and be much more professional about it. We're going to go uh, switch over to the live feeds, and at that point, Beta, you guys will be heading across. But before we separate out, are there any questions? No questions. Welcome to the 2014 First Robotics Competition, and this year's game, Aerial Assist. Aerial Assist is played on an approximately 25 by 54 foot field. Alliances of three teams each operate their robots from behind alliance walls at the ends of the field. Two large scoring goals are located at the top of each alliance wall above the driver stations. Two smaller scoring goals are at the lower corners of the alliance wall. The center of the field is spanned by the truss, which is approximately five feet above the floor. The field is segmented into three equal sized zones, red, white, and blue. Additional goalie zones are at the ends of the field, between the pairs of low goals. Aerial assist is played with two foot diameter exercise balls, colored red and blue to match the corresponding alliance. The objective of aerial assist is for teams on an alliance to work together to advance the ball down the field and score into their alliance goals at the far end of the field. A ball scored in a low goal earns one point. A ball scored in a high goal earns 10 points. Robots that assist their alliance when scoring will earn big bonuses. The match begins with each robot starting in the white zone or a goalie zone. Each robot can be preloaded with one game ball. A 10 second autonomous period starts the match. During this period, robots use pre-programmed instructions. Each ball scored during the autonomous period earns a five point bonus. One set of goals will be lit up and hot during each half of the autonomous period. Each ball scored in a hot goal gets an extra five point bonus. And every robot that moves from the center white zone into their own zone during autonomous gets another five point bonus. At the end of this period, human drivers step forward to take the controls. As the teleoperated period starts, teams command their robots to score as quickly as possible. A scoring cycle starts as a human player transfers a ball onto the field. 
Robots can just take the ball and run directly to the other end of the field to earn the basic goal score. But receiving assistance from your partners in moving the ball down the field will add bonus points. Throwing the ball over the truss on the way to a score will add a 10 point bonus and having your alliance partner catch the toss will add another 10 points. Of course, robots will have to be built robustly to avoid damage from falling balls. Meanwhile, one robot in the goalie zone can extend upwards to block shots and defend the goals. Alliances try to score as many points as they can during the two and a half minute match. Good luck, and we'll see you at the competitions. The difference uh, between taking courses and being in first is that you, you get applied, at, it's all application, it's all applied sciences. And so uh, you, you, you stand around people who do this for a living. And uh, that's the best way to learn things, is just to dive into the deep end of the pool, as we say, and then learn how to swim with this stuff. Each year we get larger, stronger, bigger, you know, in terms of what we accomplish uh, on the national scale. Our, you know, we are a force to be dealt with, which is really cool to say. I'm very excited about that. We've taken all of our accomplishments from last year and analyzed them, and we're really trying to do the exact same thing this year and we've only made improvements. Well, we're hoping to keep the ball rolling, as Mr. B said in this kickoff from last season. We uh, have lots of the support from alumni, we have lots of new equipment, and we'll hope, hopefully keep the ball rolling, do really well. Our job is to design the robot using a computer software called SolidWorks. What we are currently doing is we are determining different strategies of launching the ball, uh, different ways to score it in the top goal, and just effective ways of moving the game piece. If you have the bumper down like an inch off the ground and then roll it over the top, it'll just get wedged in between and roll it. And the arm will just raise as it goes up over yeah. the bumper. Okay. Exactly. I am the programming project manager here on Team 11. Um, it's my responsibility to oversee the software for our robot, our website, and our Android app. Uh, right now, we are working on helping things move forward by laying out the basic structure for our robot code and getting students started on identifying which side of the field is hot during the initial 10 seconds of the match, autonomous mode. Mort 11 got off to a great start in its first week of build season, making a prototype design in good time. Last night after the, uh, the prototyping session we had here in the discussion, a uh, small group of uh, the core design people and uh, other leaders went back and discussed uh, the different options we had for prototypes and shooters and everything else. We decided that we want to go with this catapult design as the shooter and this 16 style intake to, uh, as the ball intake. And we also want to take kind, uh, kind of what like Cameron's group was showing yesterday except at a smaller extent for a catcher and we're going to attach two wing type catchers onto the side that can be deployed out and um, expand the, the, the effective catching range for our machine. And we also are going to put a type, we're going to um, try different types of foam and other types of uh, like kind of like whatever memory foam materials that will dampen the blow of the ball when it falls to try to help optimize catching. So those are the different parts that we want to continue to work on. We're incredibly satisfied with how well this prototyping phase one went. Uh, Every prototype worked, every prototype was demonstrated as it was intended, and we ended up making our decisions based on a weighted objectives table that basically told us which design was objectively the best. This is looking to be a great season. Think about the fending, and we're putting a camera on here. If the camera tells us the appropriate distance, you just drive toward the goal, and the camera could say, by the time at this speed, by the time this thing gets down and up, this that ball is right where we want it. So now defending isn't stopping and shooting. Defending is driving in a direction and having the shoot happen automatically. Right now we're looking at using cameras in autonomous mode to detect which side of the field is hot. Um, essentially we would, as soon as the match started, we'd take a look at whether or not our side of the field was hot and from there be able to plan out the rest of our autonomous mode. Intuitively that may make more sense, like yeah, we want to drive forward to get the ball, but if that means we have to spin around to get it and then spin back around to shoot, that might have something to say, right? Because if we're, yeah. if we're getting all the balls from behind us, that's we're, why, that's why we thought about it this way. Yeah, we're making an assumption, but 
Yeah, no, I see where you're coming from. I really do. Because we're, I just, all, we're all going again, like straight. We're, straight we're trying ahead. to get yeah. in that direction. And having the ability to not have to turn around is good. But again, having our being so exposed, we're very defendable. After the prototype was made, it was time to create the actual robots. While Mort had initial success doing everything on schedule, it started to run into some issues. So how we're going to like progress the catting because not everything is even finalized on the drivetrain yet. And also how we're gonna prevent this in the next few weeks. Um, on my end you can pull my you can bring my deadlines down to the twenty four hours I so I could do. Okay. Um, as far as materials, is there anything we can like start prepping now? Like do, yeah, are, do we have the, the belly pants? Okay. And we can, do, pass, we can start tonight. Yeah. Belly pan. We can okay. make the practice board belly pan because it's just gonna be aluminum. All right. Uh, we need do to get steel. To? Okay. For the real one. Is that ordered? No. Why? Wow. Are we ordering it like the second we walk out of the room? Ideally. Okay. Let's do that. Um, I'm gonna talk to Brian and just get clearance with him to get the belly pan cut myself and not wait on his guys to get their ass in gear. Okay. Just because I don't have the patience to wait for them to spend half an hour to plastic cut one part. Sounds um, good. And we need that done ASAP. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what do we need to send stuff out to Nymar? Um, the drawing files. Okay, they've got the materials? No, we'll also need to send the materials too. Okay. Do we have enough hex shaft? Yes. Oh, we have, we have, yeah, we have too much hex shaft. I just, I just know we said a while ago, oh, we've got plenty of two by one. Yeah, I know. Now we don't. All right, at this point, we are at week three of a six-week build season, and uh, we are actually on schedule, which is kind of a new experience for us. Normally, by this point, we're, you know, things start to pop up and, you know, parts aren't in stock or things of that nature. And, but, uh, no, we're, we're doing well. We're right on track with where the students wanted to be. And uh, we should, uh, you know, if things continue this path, we should be able to have our practice bot rolling by next weekend and then our final bot by the end of week six. The material for the gussets isn't going to come in until when, Tuesday or Wednesday, probably. So by then we'll be able to cut it and then uh, we can actually start assembling robots. Wednesday or Thursday. For those of us who weren't here when you ordered material to assemble gussets, what's going on with that? Like, what what did you order? 0.090 aluminum. Okay, thanks for telling me that. You're welcome. In Dan's defense, he's had a really rough week as far as uh, stuff not getting done. He basically pulled an all-nighter last night to get CAD to where it is today, which is still not done. <laughs> but it's significantly further than it was last night. And so there's a lot of stuff that go that decisions get made in that CAD cave and that I don't hear about them until I go check in, basically. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it, if I hadn't asked the question, I still wouldn't be any worse off, but it's just an issue of, it sometimes can become unclear if you're outside that room what's going on inside of it. Do we have enough steel for that in the gussets? Wait a minute, I'm doing gussets out of steel? Oh yeah, too? that's right, that's right. I'm confused. I Did forgot we that we talked earlier today about using the steel for the gussets. No, no, we, we remembered that. And then you ordered aluminum as well. Yeah, I ordered aluminum. So, I didn't what, what is the that. gusset status, I guess is my question. <laughs> um, well, what do you want cut and what do you want to cut out of? I'm sorry, I am running on like a few hours of sleep. Once kickoff started, I instantly just started like, I ever since then I've been thinking of robot designs non-stop and the night after kickoff I actually stayed up until about three o'clock in the morning des trying different designs and I went to sleep and slept for about two hours and I dreamed about robots. Over weeks four and five of build season, snowstorms stopped Mort 11 from accessing the school to work on the robot. Only a few members could make it to the school each day and stress about meeting deadlines built up. But Mort members worked hard over the arduous final three weeks, and by week six, the robot was almost complete. There are always like road bumps that get in the way, but for this year, everything has largely gone to plan. That's like I think mostly contributed to uh, our catting of the entire robot beforehand and having a good game plan laid out at the beginning.
The toughest part is always, I would say, like the relationships between the team members, keeping everyone like like friends and working together, because that's that's really like the core of getting everything to work is the teamwork and the communication. That's always the hardest to maintain. After putting the finishing touches to the robot, the driving team was ready to test it at Mort's warehouse, where they have a practice arena. Today, uh, we're hoping to work out the initial few bugs, both in my code and in the robot. Um, and basically, that means that the driver's going to take it for a spin. They're going to tell me that it doesn't work right, and I'm going to fix whatever doesn't work right, give it back to them 10 minutes later, and repeat the process until we leave. Be a potential issue. Yeah. In the future. Uh, sure. Wujie, can that, can that not happen right now? I really need to do things. Like, get that ball out of there. Please. And beware, because like, I've got no control over that right now, and that's all kinds of tension. Actually, probably should get rid of that before we go. Put a ball in there. Yeah, we don't think it can like mechanically go any lower at the moment and stop. So we're going to tighten oh. the strap. I should have not said anything and let you keep f***ing around with it. Just for that stupid. Oh. Yeah, Will, ne next time something mechanically doesn't work, I'm gonna let Will continue to think that it's his problem. Nobody let Will talk to other teams, please. <laughs> oh, I'm great with other teams. Staying in the pit, locked away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm great Someone with other teams. Someone comes to our pit who just like shoved Will <laughs> into this little closet. Like, We're like, I'm table. so sorry about that. <laughs> what did he say to you? <laughs> Yeah, that's broken. Wow, it's like all the way through. Shit, shit. Okay, you missed me. This is our nightmare scenario, basically. Um, this is the kind of stuff that you wake up in the night screaming about. Uh, and by that I mean like, so this is what would happen, let's say, midway through Friday at a competition, and this, this caused you to miss all of your afternoon matches, redesigning your arm while you're at a competition. And so we're really grateful it happened now, but on the other hand, at 10 o'clock tomorrow, we've got practice with uh, 1676 and 223, Pascac and Extreme Heat. Um, and I want to show off to them, so this had better get fixed tonight. All right, so I guess when he gets here, we'll do like a, an assessment of where things are. My guess is we'll get it ready by Tuesday. We will obviously work past that Tuesday date. Uh, we'll probably swap out anything that needs to be swapped out prior to our first event, so we should be good to go. The broken robot set back the team, forcing them to cancel the practices they scheduled with other robotics teams. Fortunately, they were able to get the robot ready for their rollout event, where they presented their final product to the parents of Mort students. That means non-mission critical people. Head on upstairs. Thank you. And Christine and stay down here until they need to. Why? I already spoke to them. You aren't having to drive practice till next week with Nemesis. We're very thankful to, for, to all of you for coming out tonight to see what we've been working on for the past six weeks. It's been a very hectic, crazy time, but it's also been a lot of fun. We're very excited to show you what we've been working on. Um, before we get there, though, uh, we're gonna walk through um, all the all the student leaders who make this team possible, and they'll give you the lowdown on what they've been doing for the past six weeks. I decided to stay in the U.S. instead of going back to Korea and to pursue robotics uh, through more. It, it wasn't really fun staying in a country where I could barely speak to anyone, and the language barrier, the cultural shock. It, it was pretty daunting, but more has given me a way to communicate with others, to work with others, and achieve goals together. And first has been the inspiration for that goal and the motivation to drive me to look for it. Mort has become my second family, and I thank everyone on the team for making that happen. Thank you.
most of all, I think I've developed like kind of a family bond with all the team members. Once the team was pumped up for the competition season, it was ready to host the Mount Olive District event, featuring 38 robotics teams in the nearby area. What we try to do is inspire the kids to want to become science and technology leaders. Our, our message is really to, to get kids inspired to want to learn things uh, by making it fun and, and making it exciting. It's one of the most important things that we do for our youth in this community is having the high school offer this program. It affects every single aspect of education from, as you said, community involvement to uh, corporate uh, relationships between the high school and the students to engineering, to team uh, building, and I know that Mount Olive's team is perhaps one of the finest programs in the country. The team confidently sent the robot out to its first match, but they were not prepared for the error that they encountered. Uh, we had an uh, issue with our code that didn't allow us to effectively communicate with the, uh, the field, so therefore it kind of left us out there uh, as a dead bot, but the uh, issue appears to be corrected, and we're basically rolling out for uh, match two, and we'll see if we got it all ironed out, so fingers are crossed. I made a stupid little mistake in this pit up. I, I removed code to make it drive and tally up because I, well, I wanted to see zero autonomous. I made it not a zero autonomous anymore, and then I forgot to bring it back in. It's fixed now, but I feel like it is. Will and his pit team were able to fix the coding of the robot. Sure enough, once the problem was dealt with, Mort 11 was back on track. We keep going in this trajectory, we have a really good yeah. shot of seating. You guys are doing a great job. Mort was able to get back into the game, raising the team's spirits through their success in the first matches. While the drive team performed consistently, their robot did not. As a result, technical problems were the main reason Mort lost most of its matches following their brief string of wins. At this point, we're not doing too horrible for the amount of chaos that's going on in our pits. Uh, but. I was looking forward to a much more laid-back event where everything was great and my robot wasn't exploring. We just got our cam system working again, which means we'll be able to shoot and score points that way. So we're at the practice field right now um, fixing that up, and if we can get our catapult working again, then we should be able to get the score way higher and be able to perform for elimination rounds. We, uh, we had a rough start, uh, as everyone knows, with getting the, the cam system and the shooter working. So it was great to come back from that and uh, get, a, get our functionality back up to the top where it should have been. And hopefully we'll make a sh good show at Eliminations tomorrow, tomorrow. So we're ready to play. Yeah. Everything that happens in the pit directly affects the robot performance. Um, and I guess the way I would put it uh, would just be that Yesterday was probably my most miserable day as pit captain because there were several times when I sent out a robot that I knew wasn't working but didn't have the time to fix. And so like I ate my lunch yesterday at around 3 o'clock after having blown up the uh, cam for the second time on the practice field uh, and just known that it was going to come back in about 20-30 minutes and I was gonna have to repeat the one hour process that it took to get the thing off in the morning again. And the second time it didn't take as long, it only took 30 minutes, but it was still sad and miserable. And me and John Sweeney cried into our Gatorades and mac and cheese.
What else do you need? I think he's getting a battery. What did you need to do? Tangway. Tangway. That's more battery. We don't have time. No, it's all good. Making sure that we're not going to fall apart on the field. Okay. Uh, and we're going to try to figure out why the cam's warping, etc. Um, current plan is to not make any changes that will force us to come back here. But I'll let you know. All right, cool. While the pit crew fixed the robot, the scout team was working on finding other robots to join in the elimination rounds. So the rules for alliance pickings is uh, the top the top eight seated teams are alliance captains, and they can pick either another seated team or um, or they can pick a, a non seated team. If your team that's not an alliance captain, you bas you're basically forced to say yes because if you say no, then you can't. Mort eleven proved to be a good draft choice, for they were chosen by the second seated team. During a limbs, it's more. Um, it's like everybody understands, uh, okay, we're going to be the scoring robot, you're going to be the trusting robot, so um, it just kind of makes it really easy to, uh, to strategize. You have to figure out who's getting the Auton balls after they miss, stuff like that. After strategizing with their alliance partners, Mort was ready to play in the quarterfinals. It takes two out of three wins against another team to move on. led Mort and its competitors into an overtime period. It was determined that the winner of the overtime match would advance to the semifinals. Ty left the entire event holding their breath, waiting for the official results to be determined. Luckily, the judges ruled on a foul in favor of Mort, setting the score 71 to 70. I've never had to go to a double tiebreaker like that before in my career, so to sit there and win it by a tie tiebreaker point of one, so uh, a little bit, I'm pump, pumped up at the moment, but uh, you know, we'll uh, let it kind of, hopefully everyone will have lunch now and settle down and we'll get dialed in for after lunch and go on to the semis. After Mount Olive, we learned a couple of things, the main one being how to play the game. Um, when, we, when the game dropped, we kind of thought, okay, this is going to be the best way to play it. But then after the first event, we saw how the winning teams played the game, and we're like, okay, that's what we got to do. We have to change the robot to play that way. Mort next went to the Chestnut Hill District event. The pit crew encountered similar issues with the robot, sometimes just watching it sit in the middle of the field. Mort was only able to qualify into the quarterfinals, where they were eliminated after three rounds. Disappointment's not easy um, because of all the time and effort we put into building our robots and getting on the field and, and playing the best we can and doing all the strategy to position ourselves to 
go as deep as we can at the events and to, to not see it happen uh, is tough. Uh, but on the other side, you know, we're, our, our, our students are, are able to bounce back quickly. We can get dialed in and focused on that next event, and that's what we do, and we give it our best effort. I have this sense that at some point Connor is going to realize the, when, when we open that bag and Connor sees the things that are going on in that robot, that uh, he'll quickly discover that I wasn't lying when I said things are not in great shape um, behind the scenes. Like, they work great. And that's what your pit crew will do for you. They will take a piece. Of, they will take a pile of garbage with wheels and make it a working robot after every match. Um, but your pit crew is not miracle workers, and they can only they can only cover up so much garbage with working stuff. I just I just want to get the uh, the intake dealt with first. I gotta go to class. Connor, I understand you want to get your intake done, but. It shouldn't come at the cost of every other aspect of this robot. Well, I don't understand how it is coming at the cost of every other every other. How aspect. many components of the end effector are on this robot right now? Done, but that's the practice bot. That's, that actually improves the cause because they're going to Hawaii to be experts. You know who has to program them and has not had a chance to touch them yet? You have had a chance to touch them. We had a working autonomous at Chesna, and you say it's it's like kind of like a ghetto autonomous, but it still works. And like I said before, Connor, we have it plenty still of works time means there. It's a I, it still works means it's a ticking time bomb. Okay. Well, we have time to work out the encoder issues. It's not going to take us 12 hours. Yes, it to... will. Yes, it will, Connor. Okay. Then I'll, I'll personally help you guys out then, because it should. If it takes us 12 hours to figure out how to get an encoder working, well, or no, and your the and gearbox. the new intake, and wire the new intake, and verify the new intake works, and fix whatever issues are. We can do the intake, intake stuff here because it's our, it's all still here. We didn't create that. That we can get all working here. I designed it to be completely idiot-proof. It's literally nothing else changes on the, nothing changes on the robot at all. Period. All you have to do is pop out the, the little clevis rods and pop them back in with the new intake, and that is it. But I gotta go, so I'll talk to you more later. Despite the mounting pressure, Mort was prepared for the next competition, the Hawaii Regional. After traveling more than 5,000 miles, they arrived at Waikiki Beach, ready to claim the coveted Chairman's Award. Chairman's Award basically is an award that is given to teams that represent what the first mission is. It's a team that other teams can look to emulate and it really helps to push STEM education initiatives uh, on a much larger scale. A part of Chairman's is doing outreach to our community where we go out into our community and tell them what FIRST is, what STEM is, what MORE is, and getting them very interested so that when they're old enough to, they can join the team or they can sponsor the team or help out our team so we can help them. Winning the Chairman's Award was priority, but the team still strategized to win the event. There's two outcomes to this competition. It's either get picked by 359 and win, uh, and don't get picked by them and lose. The practice match has been great. We just had two in a row with 359, who are the unofficial favorites. Um, they are the host team here, and there are already two regionals up this year, so they're looking at a third one, and I'd be quite happy with our first. If we show that we played with them, like we complement each other, then hopefully we'll be higher up on the pick list. Plus, our teams are already pretty buddy-buddy. feels like a winner. I, I, this robot is, is definitely at the point where I think it can win most events. We just have to get some good luck tomorrow and work well with our partners and I think we uh, have a good shot. All right, here is the big moment, the first pick of the draft. Who is your selection? Team 368, proudly sponsored by the would like to thank Team 359 for selecting us first last year. We would like to return the favor and select them, invite them to our alliance first. Uh, 
Uh, the first seed is really tough. There's 368 and 359, and they're both like probably two of the best robots here at this competition. So uh, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Team 4158 would like to choose team number 11. Oh, come on! Team 11 graciously accepts. All right. I feel that if there's any alliance that's going to take them down, it's going to be us. Mort's alliance competed well, winning the first quarterfinals match and losing by a close margin in the next one. The tiebreaker game would have been won, but Mort experienced technical difficulties. And the thing is, we could have gone further. The battery leads were not plugged in all the way. The first big hit we took, they popped out. It's a big, heavy connector that takes a lot of strength to put in. And normally the rule is that pit crew does it because drive team can't be trusted. Um, and that didn't happen and we got burned. But at some point, I'll be able to talk to Dan and Connor again. Might not be war here, but sometime. Despite the loss, Mort still had high hopes to win the chairman's award. I think it went really well. We've been practicing for three or four months now. As you can tell, I'm losing my voice from practicing so much. But uh, we've done a lot, and I think we did really well, and that it's going to be a great competition. This year's Hawaii Regional Chairman's Award recipient, and they have a great softball at Taffy. It's team. <laughs> Uh, it was pretty incredible when Chairman's in Hawaii. Walking into Hawaii, we were competing against a team that started first on an entire continent, and we just, we were completely shocked when we won. I mean, it was the first blue banner of our season. It was pretty exciting. I mean, we worked really hard for that, and I think we really deserved it. What are you doing? You can be part of Making sure it's real. That's nasty, dude. Not. Dude, I bite every single medal I ever win. That's so disgusting. No, that's, that's how you guarantee That's more nasty, medals. right? That's how you win more medals. The chairman's team lifted the spirits of Mort just in time. For Mort's next stop was the Mid-Atlantic Robotics Championship. Yesterday was an absolute bloodbath for everybody here, um, including us. We went four and five. Uh, Autonomous had trouble. Our, ro our drivetrain blew up twice and then we fixed it and then it was all good. Uh, right now we're hoping to clean up Autonomous going into our first match. We've got an hour to do that. Uh, and if that comes out well, then we're in good shape for Elims. Super excited, it's awesome. We love Nemesis. We haven't been fortunate enough to play with them this season, but we're great friends with them. We've practiced a lot with them. We know how they work. We know how we work together. And uh, so it's a great, great feeling. Also our third robot, uh, 341, Team Daisy. They're also a great team. I think we'll have a great dynamic between us to win. Mort's Alliance dominated the event, but Mort's all underclassmen team, Mort Beta, did as well. Both teams faced one another in the final rounds.
winning Mar, Mar Champs was huge. Uh, our team has never done it, and uh, to be able to pull off that win, um, and also to play against Beta in the finals at Mar Champs, which is a whole other milestone on that side of the, of the, of the room, and uh, yeah, it was awesome, really cool experience. Winning Chairman's Award and Mar Champs sent Mort, along with the successful Beta team, to St. Louis for the first championships. Probably the biggest uh, matchups that we're going to have are is our match with 469, a match with 987, and then we have a match with the Cheesy Poofs, Team 254. Uh, we really got to make sure that we impress those guys because they're probably going to be near the top few seeds and we would really like to be part of with them. We chopped the top part of the towers of the catapult off because we discovered that they interfere with our longer shot, our full court shot. We went through this entire uh, competition season thinking that our uh, long shot didn't work, and then we just chopped it off, tested it on the practice field, and it works beautifully. Oh. Uh, the reverse, you know how before the ball had two points on the front and then it weighed on the back? Yeah. Now it's the opposite, weights on the front, two points on the back. Our long shot's back, it's only taken six weeks, but now we can actually do what we designed to do. Um, Goalie pole is going to get put on at some point today. Uh, things are moving forward. We ran through all of our system checks. Um, the students seem dialed in, ready to go, and we're just queued up for our first match. And uh, I think we can have a really strong showing. So we'll wait and see. From Flanders, New Jersey, it's Mort. And now Mort pushing that Alberta Temple line seam all the way to the corner. They're your Hawaii Regional Chairman's Award winner and your Bar Champ winners. They're showing you why they belong here on St. Louis today. 125 trying to get in position for theirs. Meanwhile, Mort on the blue side trying to get the shot in and up. And it's good. Now Mort looking to try to acquire the ball. Doing what they can to try to keep them away from that ball. 16, 20, so you guys did really well. That was some amazing deboning. Uh, I don't know. Like, yes. 10 seconds. I don't, I don't know if you saw Tom Tigliari from the Cheesy Boots came up to me after the match and said that was a really good team. Oh, really? Yes. Tom Bot? So, I, I think we're in a good place. Um, we will uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow, but you guys are driving the piss out of this thing and I couldn't be more proud of this. Well, I just hope we fall into the right alliance, and if we do, I mean, we have the robot, we have the drivers, we have the scouts, we have everything we need to take it all the way, as long as we have the partners. I'd like to invite to be your alliance partner. Team 254, I'd like to invite Team 469 to form an alliance. Team 135 and Team 1241 would like to invite Team 11 to join our alliance. There was four different teams for eliminations, and with the subbing, you can sub one team out at a time, because there's only three that play at once, obviously. and. Um, there was some trouble agreeing on who should be subbed out, and there was some trouble working together with our alliance partners. Team 11 graciously accepts. Making the best of their situation, Mort went into the quarterfinal rounds. It's immediately an autonomous action. One high goal, two high goals for Blue. Cyberdome's quickly acquiring that red autonomous ball, looking to clear it out and to begin their cycles. Breaking it off the human player wall, human station, driver station. 190 to 162. Blue Alliance needs to get a last second score here. Up and in, but the trust toss, 200, 182 as time expires. The first match we just, just did, us 1241 and 135, we thought, okay, we'll inbound 1241 trusses, 135 finishes. But we uh, fried a baker, fried a breaker from um, from getting a pushing match. But that's like a three second fix. You freeze it, and you put it back on, it's fine. So they subbed us out, and ironically we won. I don't know how that happened. But then, uh, so, I mean, then after that, on our third match, they subbed us back in, and 1241 missed like four trust shots in a row, and the whole thing went downhill from there. This is a fantastic season. I've got no hard feelings about the way we went out. At championships, things just happen between the schedule and elims and robots dying. Things just kind of happen as they happen. We drove the robot the best that we could, and we played with the cards that we were dealt. 
and in the last match I was in a position that wasn't really the, the normal one. And there was yep. a lot of crafting out, like missed shots. And yeah, I know they were having yeah. difficulty getting the shots in. That's the way it goes. Yep. All right, well, good effort, you know. And, and I, I heard Beta also got... Beta, yeah, Beta's out. Second match, they, they lost by one point because of the penalty. So, it's all right. Mort's season was over, so they packed their robot for the last time and headed home. Robotics has kind of been like my home for the past four years. Uh, like coming into high school, I really didn't have a plan for my life and I was honestly kind of a bum. And then just because I took like robotics class because I wanted to play with Legos and because I was, Will Marshall was on my bus, I joined robotics. And uh, that's, it pretty much changed who I was completely. I joined Mort four years ago. I've been on the team all four years. I didn't travel my first year, but that was a big mistake. I chose to play lacrosse. And it was, I love lacrosse. I've, you know, I've always liked that sport, but I regretted my decision because this team is honestly like a family to me. Yesterday when we got on the bus, even though we lost, I wasn't crying because we lost. I'm crying because you guys are all my family and I love you so much. And I wouldn't trade you for the world. This team has given me a chance to become, it's given me a place where I, I feel like I belong. There's a German phrase I would like to use, even when there's no translation for it really. But it goes like, ihr werdet immer am Herzen sein, egal was passiert. Danke für alles. It's kind of, I don't know how to translate it, but at the end it means I love you all and I will never forget you. And don't ever think that you can't. Because honestly, the sky's the limit with us. We've got the resources to do what we need to do. We've got more than enough manpower. All we need is the opportunity and the willingness and the, I don't want to say ability, but the ability. The ability to look at a problem and find a solution that works. And all of you underclassmen, you guys have it. More, uh, having students being a part of Mort is, I've seen it in past years and I see it again this year. It really is a stepping stone for what they look to do uh, post high school. Uh, I've seen many of our students go on to have awesome careers in STEM, uh, all different areas, whether it's comp sci or electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, biomedical, I mean the whole, it really just, it gets the students ready with the, the life skills needed to do well at that next chapter.